All right, we got the 1910 Hudson Model 20 Open Roadster. This car is 114 years old. And today, we're gonna take it out for a spin. What makes this car special, Dan, was that it was affordable for the time. They did a really, really good job marketing it. They made a ton of them, 4,000 in its first year, which is pretty crazy. I mean, the car is kind of iconic. It, it added something else to the market that it desperately needed because the Model T was taking over. And this was like one of the first really valid competitors to the Model T. What do you know about Hudson? He's a businessman from the early 1900s, right. had department stores, and that is the extent of my knowledge. So I think he made a bunch of money with those department stores and invested with eight others to create the Hudson Motor Corporation. Oh, how come he got to name it? He had the money. <laughs> got that shmoney. Money. 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 Roy Chapin, who would eventually go on to serve as the United States Secretary of Commerce, was the president of the Hudson Motor Company. He believed automobiles would become one of America's biggest industries and wanted to get in on the ground floor. Early advertising convinced about 4,000 people to send in $25 deposits for the new car. Advertised as strong, speedy, roomy, stylish. This represented the highest number of first year sales of any car company and quickly earned Hudson respect in the American auto market. There are a lot of people who did that though. 1900s, everyone's like, ooh, car's are gonna be the next big thing. And so they were like, Let's build but it. I think these guys had a pretty good run. Uh, Hudson Motor Corporation didn't fold until the 50s. So that in itself is kind of a feat of strength because there are a lot of other brands that just, you know, one car, two cars gone. We don't have very many preservation class cars, but this is one of them. It's probably one of our better examples too. As you can tell by the wonderful patina that we have on there and the patina, wearing Patina, Dan, are you kidding me? That's, that this looks like clapped out rust. Yeah, but that's because it's the OG paint. Everybody wants that. People come to look at our Hudson if they're gonna restore Hudson because this is the most original version of it. We call it a preservation class. What exactly does that mean? Well, cars in the preservation class are maintained in their original unrestored condition. They're prized for their authenticity and historical integrity. These vehicles showcase the natural wear and patina that comes with age and use, giving us a true glimpse into their past. It being unrestored is pretty crazy. I mean, this thing is over 100 years old. It still runs. We've heard that it's a good runner. We're gonna find out later. But I don't necessarily know that I believe it. What I do know is that the cost of restoring this car would definitely be a lot more expensive than the value that it would actually achieve. And you would lose that sweet patina. Mm. Mm. Altogether, this car only had about 3,000 parts. That doesn't sound like very many, Bobby. I think cars today are made out of like 30,000 parts versus like leather, horse hair, metal and wood. Asbestos, you forgot that. Ah, oh, the asbestos, that's the most important part. So you think with 3,000 parts, Dan, that we'd actually be able to fix this car if it broke down? Is it made out of Legos? I think the only things that aren't original are these leather straps and the tires, but that makes right. sense. That makes sense because rubber gets old and cracks and can't, and we want to be able to drive it. I know, we're going to be driving this later, and we want that rubber to actually meet the road. So a car of this age, Dan, I'm not seeing a lot of illumination options, but I do see this lantern. So these lanterns were pretty slick. These are kerosene wick lanterns. They were really useful back in the time. There wouldn't be a lot of street lights or a lot of house lights. It'd be really dark, and so if your car broke down and you need to do a quick repair, swap a tire, check out the engine, you could actually unbolt the uh, lantern from the car, and you could take it around. So it'd be super indispensable. So the options, as we talked about, were the fuel tank or the rumble seat. Yeah, it was a 25 gallon optional fuel tank, but obviously whoever owned this car to begin with decided on neither of those. Uh, you can actually see the step where it could have been a rumble seat, but instead of leaving this area blank, it looks like they improvised a little pickup bed for it so that they could store things. Dan, let's go ahead and talk about the mechanics of this vehicle. Follow me. All right, well, I hope you do most of the explaining because I don't know too much about mechanics. We have a three-speed slide gear H-pattern transmission. Very modern looking. Very modern. It's uh, got a parking brake here. Do you know what these three pedals are for? I'm gonna guess that they're the brake, the gas, and the clutch, but I know sometimes these cars are a little wonky. That's correct. So we got a uh, clutch, we have the accelerator, and we have the brake. Hmm but there was options on the steering wheel for that acceleration. So basically this acted like a cruise control. Oh, cool. So a little hand throttle action there. Exactly. And... <laughs> that 
That is a horn. Perfect for spooking the horses. Exactly. Get out of my way, dirty horse. I'm gonna hit my tiny little accelerator and off I go. Look how small that is. I, my foot would barely be able to hit that without hitting the brake at the same time. Uh, we also had a, a speedometer here and it's an endodometer, which is showing 6,300 miles. It's, it's kind of a low mileage example if that's really truly 6,300 miles. But I mean, how far were people really traveling at the time? It's not like in the 1910s that you had a interconnected road. Or That'd a be a lot system. of bumpy driving. So let's talk about the heart of this patina beast. We have a inline four cylinder, 198 cubic inch engine. Generating that big 20 horsepower. Exactly, so it's an L-shaped head um, and it does uh, have a crank on the front, which you, you can start it with the crank, but we uh, prefer to actually do the push start. All right, explain to me the push start. You're gonna be pushing and I'm gonna drop that clutch. Ah, you're lucky I'm so strong here. Big boy. To ensure our Hudson stays in good shape, we're gonna have our docent, Steven, drive today. Oh, uh, we're excited. So what's the startup procedure, Steven? The startup procedure on this car, since it predates the electric starter, is to hand crank the engine to start it. But that space up there is so confined between the headlights and the crossover bar, it's kind of dangerous to do that. So we actually prefer the more manual method of actually pushing it to start. All right, well, I appreciate you not sending me out to go push it too. We're the lucky ones. Yeah. Trust me. Woo! Smooth like butter. Yeah, it's getting smoother. It's not quite butter like yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's just feeling good. It's more on the March record game. They're good with the battery game. Yeah. Oh, we are not. Oh, 20 mighty horsepower is the engine. But it is. It does not look like our speedometer is working. But it's okay, we just guessed the name. Come on. Just that. It's the only one in this condition in the entire world, Dan. As far as anyone has ever told us, it is. And it runs. It blows me away that this thing runs because everyone who comes to the museum comes in, looks at this car, and they're like, there's no well, way it runs. There's no way this car runs. The 1910 Hudson Model 20 Open Roadster is a truly special preservation class, and we are the only place in this world that you can see it right here at the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. Come and visit us here at the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. We are a living museum and we're excited to share our stories with you. You're gonna see the cars not only on the floor, you're gonna see them out running and driving. So we hope to see you soon. Come and check us out. Thanks for checking our video out. We're excited to bring you more. Comment, like, and subscribe. We got a lot of content coming. We'll see you soon.